From New York, New York. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Yo, it's your boy, holla back. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. What a day today. The stock market had its biggest one-day point loss ever. 778 points. That's just over 7%. The uh, second worst was the 684.81 loss of... uh, September 17th, 2001. That was the first day the market opened up after September 11th. That's bad. That is bad. And um, a lot of this had to do with the fact that uh, the House of Representatives voted against this bank bailout package endorsed by the president. And the reason I'm talking about this is not because I'm a political junkie or a news junkie. I'm a money junkie. And... This is going to affect you. Maybe not today, maybe not the day after tomorrow, but sometime soon. When you're trying to buy a car or trying to buy a house or trying to extend the credit line on your Visa card, it's going to affect you. Or when you're busy getting laid off or what have you. And we have welcomed uh, in uh, Mike Crittenden, who is a business reporter for Dow Jones Newswires, to talk about how this is relevant to you. Now, one of the big questions I get, Mike, and I know you're not a financial advisor, you're a reporter, but uh, I want to talk a bit about this. Everybody's wondering what they should do. And I don't really know who to trust anymore. And I know that a lot of people listening feel the same way. People want to know if they should now go ahead and buy a house because there are so many foreclosures. People want to know if they should start their 401ks now or if they should increase their contributions or if they shouldn't invest at all. Uh, people are wondering if they should save money or spend money. I mean, and now uh, there is such a crisis in confidence, I don't even know who to tell people to trust anymore. Because uh, I personally, I've got money, and I don't trust anybody. Well, I think, I think that's a common sentiment that a lot of people here in uh, Washington are trying to. I mean, that's what they're hearing. Um, you know, there there is a lot of question about that. It's, the economy is not in good shape, and, uh, you know, this is... This is basically the Treasury's uh, break the glass plan. That's how they've described it um, to try to help things, to help stabilize things. I mean, this is the uh, this is the emergency break the glass. Don't pull in case of emergency. This is this is the plan. Uh, it was put together by Democrats, Republicans, and the administration, and then you know it just got derailed today. It, I, it was it was spectacular to watch. Um, let me ask. A, let me ask another stupid question here, uh, and I like to ask stupid questions because that's how that's how I've learned everything I know. Um, from what I read, this year we have a budget deficit somewhere in the vicinity of between four hundred and five hundred billion dollars. Uh-huh. That's that's at the end of the day, at the end of all the taxes that are collected, all the expenditures, the war in Iraq, whatever. We end up with a deficit of four hundred billion dollars. Where are we going to get seven hundred billion dollars? Well, it's it's not it's not an immediate outlay, and, you, and I don't want to get too jargony. But it's not like you're just spending that money. I mean, that some of that money is borrowed. I mean, you're buying assets, so you're just buying assets. It's like collateral with anything, like with a house. You know, it's you use that for your loan as collateral. So the whole plan here is to buy us a bunch of assets that have the banking industry frozen to try to free up. You know, some credit so people can get home loans, so people can get car loans, so people can refinance things, you know, student loans for people sending their kids to college. So we're trying to free. I think that's policymakers are trying to free that that money up. And, uh, you know, the problem is there's all these bad assets tied to all these crazy exotic mortgages and mortgage securities out there. And so that's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's not the deficit effect is uh, uh, debatable. 
I mean, it's not going to suddenly. It's not like we're suddenly in the hole for seven hundred billion if this passes. But uh, right. and and then another another question I have, and I'm sure I'm asking the questions everybody is asking or thinking about. All right, so let's just take one particular piece of real estate somewhere in Rancho Cucamonga. Somebody uh -huh. bought a house for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that in reality is worth three hundred thousand, or we don't know how much less than seven hundred and fifty thousand. We only know somebody defaulted and the house was foreclosed. Uh -huh. And now the bank is uh, it, it has is holding this this property, uh, and as collateral, so they're going to sell that to the government. And at what rate is the government going to be buying that property? Ten cents on the dollar, ninety nine cents on the dollar. <laughs> I mean, um, how much is it worth to the government? And how are they going to know if they got a good deal? And the, are are they getting good deals? Or do we even know? Well, the thing is, they're not going to be buying uh, specific properties. That's what they did back in the Great Depression. It actually worked out well for the government. This is them buying some of these uh, these mortgages that people have, that these banks are holding, that are still performing, but maybe the person's a few months behind. That's what the government wants to buy, and you know, securities like that. And as for the pricing, you know, Congress doesn't set that. The Treasury Treasury is going to set that. You know, the people have been talking about maybe twenty four cents on the dollar, twenty five cents. The key here is that. There used to be this massive market around the world to trade and sell these um, these mortgages and these securities. That, mar that market doesn't exist anymore. No one knows what the price is worth. So if the government starts buying them at, say, 20 cents on the dollar, that sets the price, and then everyone else can start trading on that, and eventually a market is created. So that's what they're trying to do. That's the theory behind it. You know, whether or not that's the right price, I mean, that, that that's one of the huge difficulties here. And that's why I wonder, like, how did Hank Paulson decide seven hundred billion dollars? Why not eight hundred and fifty billion? Why not four hundred billion? Where'd well, they come up with that number? Actually, uh, my, one of my colleagues at the uh, the Wall Street Journal, I mean, reported, you know, in a meeting, they made, tre Treasury was asked that specifically, like, why not? Why, you know, some of the Democrats in the Senate were saying, well, why not a smaller number? And his, uh, the, the basic response is we needed a number big enough to send the message to global markets saying, hey, we're taking care of this problem. So that that's, I mean, they picked the number. It's not necessarily, you know, they did some measurement that we need this much, but it's not this much. It was, we need a big, a big number to, uh, you know, sell this to everyone and to instill that confidence because it's really the psychology in the markets right now. It's, you know, no one had, there's no confidence and they're trying to restore that. It seems to me that there's clearly a problem here. The politicians and the banks have misjudged uh, or f misjudged the American people or have failed to articulate what this really is. I mean, what this really appears to be to the average American is that the banks and the mortgage companies and the other financial institutions want the country to be a free market where they can do whatever they want unfettered by regulation as much as possible until they make a bad investment and then they want us to bail them out they have not done a very good job of articulating uh, an opposing viewpoint or convincing us that that's not what they're doing right no and i think uh, i think that is something um, i've actually heard from lawmakers is that they have to do a better job of that the key here for for people is to understand that you know there is this trickle down effect. Um, I don't think any you know most of the Democrats in charge of Congress right now agree wholeheartedly that you know these are bad actors. Next Congress, they've promised to um, overhaul the regulation of these firms. I mean, these firms were allowed to do basically anything they want for years, and so you know they're going to address that next Congress. It's it's not something you can do immediately. But more importantly, in the short term, the long-term effect on the economy, if Congress doesn't act, what they're saying is that's going to be a lot worse than if they just let all these banks fail, cause, or insurance companies like AIG. I mean, you let one of these firms fail, they're all interconnected. And it's like what you're seeing with, uh, you know, Wachovia today, having to sell itself to Citigroup and Washington Mutual failing last week. And, you know, it, it's sort of a domino effect, and uh, they're trying to sort of, Put a, put a hand in to stop uh, stop that collapse. Yeah. Of course, we own AIG now, don't we? Yeah, hopefully we can get uh, cheaper homeowner policies. 
<laughs> oh, the government's great at doing things cheaply. I'll tell you what. Just amazing. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Uh, people are confused. They're angry. And uh, you'd be surprised. I'm getting a lot of callers to this show saying, let the banks fail. Well, I'm getting the same emails, you, uh, the, you know, like those calls. And uh, I think the, the message that I think a lot of people in Washington probably would want to send a better message out to people is that if those banks fail, it does have an effect on them. I mean, job losses, um, you know, a deep recession, uh, stagnant wages, maybe decreased wages, higher unemployment. So, I mean, there are a lot of effects, uh, even though, you know, I think a lot of people would like to say just let, let the bastards fail, but, uh, you know, that does have a consequence. Well, unfortunately, there's such a crisis in confidence. So many people already don't trust the government, uh, trust them less now than they did six months ago. Um, we have seen what has happened with mortgages. We have seen what has happened with foreclosures. And we've had a government that said, if we don't do this, it's going to be a big problem. That's that's so just to prove it. And uh, no oversight, no delay. Weapons of mass destruction, uh, the uh, the Patriot Act. I mean, we've heard this over and over. We have to do this right away and don't ask any questions. And I think the people just uh, are worn out from that. No, oh, I don't disagree. I think you're you're exactly right. I, mean, I think, you know, I've heard a lot of that from lawmakers over the last week as well. I mean, when the administration said we just need to do this and hand them a three and a half, two and a half page document last Saturday morning, a week ago from this past Saturday, two and a half pages, you know, people weren't very happy. Now it's a 110 page document. There's a lot of oversight in there. There's a lot more things. Congress has had its say in the process. But, you know, there is that skepticism, and we're five weeks away from a major election. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of different current, cross currents going on here that um, are playing a major role. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. We really appreciate it. Happy to. Mike Crittenden, uh, representing Dow Jones Newswires. He's a, an economics reporter, and um, he knows what's going on. Uh, at least as much as one can know what's going on, because frankly, a lot of people, a lot of people who know a lot of things aren't really sure what's going on. Uh, in case you're just tuning in, this has been quite a day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average had its biggest single-day point loss ever, 778 points in one day. The Dow Jones went down over 7% today, today. It's outrageous. And after the president went on TV, this all this stuff is happening at one time. After the president, a Republican, went on TV and said, please, please pass this bailout package. We've got to do something. Please do the right thing. Who voted against it? His own party. It's, it's just remarkable. And we'll take some more of your telephone calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM as we continue. Tom Likas. Like 1 800 5800 Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 866. Every time you have a New Yorker, a person that thinks he, knows, he or she knows better than you, or a person that's a Jesus freak, oh my God. Or better than that, a Jesus freak from New York who thinks he knows more than I do, which is a Quinella. No, no kidding. It's the Tom Likas Show. City, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's continue with your telephone calls. Let's say hi here to Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Greg. Hello, Father. What up? Nothing. How's the epicenter of the earth? <laughs> well, put it this way. I wouldn't want to be at the financial epicenter. <laughs> I hear you there, Dad. Hey, I am furious. It's amazing to me how the government will bail out the banks, but they will never bail out the people. And it's us who are diligent people who invest wisely, who stick by their guns and do what you're supposed to do with your money and put into 401Ks. And I look at mine today, and I have an $8.90 drop on my 401K. I mean, that's equivalent. I, I can't even think of a dollar amount right now. Wait, wait, no, 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 you mean, yeah, wait, 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 8.9% drop. Eight dollars and ninety cents. 
Yeah, your wait, your four hundred one k dropped eight dollars and ninety cents. How you much do you have invested? A hundred dollars? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're eight eight point nine percent. Yeah, excuse me. I'm sorry. I got a little static there. Eight point nine dollars would not be a lot of money. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was. Uh, I worked for a major oil company, and I took a brief look at it today, and uh, so I was in and out of the office, and I I, I could have sworn it said it, yesterday it was in the high seventies, and now it was in the sixties today. It was like 66-something. It was down from uh -huh. like 75-something yesterday. So, yeah, it was about $8.90. But when it closed, it was only down $6 and something cents. And I, I was just too frustrated to look at it. But it, it, I cannot believe how the government bails out the bail out the, pe the banks, but will not bail out the people. It will never happen like that. And it's just it's real frustrating. I don't even know. All I can do is come home and open a beer, and that's it. Very well, here's another way to look at it. You know, oil prices dropped by uh, uh, over $10 a barrel. Yeah. Uh, about 9.9%. The biggest one-day drop since November 2001. Now, get this. Uh, tomorrow's L.A. Times quotes somebody named Sean Broderick, an analyst for an investment newsletter called Money and Markets. He said, all of this has to do with credit. If they cannot unfreeze the credit markets, it's going to mean, get this, lower oil prices. Right. So one could argue that you would be opposed to the bailout because you want the price of gasoline to come down. That's true. That is true. But where, where does someone like myself go now? Do I move my money onto the money market? Or is, is that shattered, too? Well, or, where is your money? My money is invested in Vanguard. But is it invested in mutual funds or is it in money markets? Where is it? Company stock. Company stock. You work for Vanguard? No, 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 no. I work for a major oil company, and my stock is invested in the company. Okay, so Vanguard runs your company's 401k, and you've I'm got just, Vanguard funds. Yeah, so I'm sorry. It's just a little hard to hear here. But, yes, it's invested through Vanguard into my company stock. Well, uh, I wouldn't move anywhere. I'm in Vanguard myself, among others. Vanguard is not privately owned. It's owned by the uh, people who invest in Vanguard, by people like you and me. Right. So it okay. doesn't answer to Wall Street. It's not publicly traded. Right. And uh, therefore, it doesn't take any of those crazy risks. Right. Now, if I wanted to invest in something else that they had to offer within my program, would you be able to suggest anything other than, like, my company stock, just taking that huge dip? I know you're not a financial well, analyst. Well, uh, wait, are you, wait, wait. Are you telling me that 100% of your 401k is in company stock? Yes. Well, that, that should have changed a long time ago. I know, I know. But it, it your is, company you know. stock should not be more than 5 to 10% of your total portfolio. Right, right. And I was uh, waiting until I got over a certain amount until I started diversifying that. And uh, it just have not got to the point of my liking. And then probably about a month and a half ago, it really slid down about $25 a share. And it really, I started taking a blow. And I should have pulled it out a lot sooner than that. And I realize that now. But uh, they do give me other criteria, which I could uh, uh, choose from, from my deduction out of my check that I've been putting into for a quite a long time. Yeah. And uh, what, do you, what do you feel is like a good, um, you know, stock or some type of mutual well, fund? Well, you what you want to be in, first of all, you don't want to put a big amount in at one time. Right. Well, because the market could drop another 1,000 points next week for all we know. Sure, sure. So you don't want to put the whole ball of wax in at one time, but you certainly want to cash that out uh, and and reduce it to, you know, literally you should take 90% of that money and cash it in. You know, when I say cash it in, I mean within your 401k, leave it in there. Right, sure. And then slowly invest that money into simple mutual funds like Vanguard's uh, total market fund, which is, uh, it owns essentially every major stock index. Yes, I understand. Yeah, and just stock. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, Tom. And they, it's called Vanguard Sto Total Stock Market Fund. Yeah, I know uh, that exactly is what you're to me about. that's about as vanilla as it gets. Vanguard Stock Fund. Total Stock Market Total Stock. Fund. Total Stock Market Fund. I'm just writing Ask this down, about Tom. That. I will do so. Hey, I appreciate your help, Tom. By the uh, way, even that mo that one today probably took a huge hit because everything took a huge hit today. Oh, I know. You know, and like I said, I was in any out of the office, but it was like from point, you know, the start of the day to the end of the day, it was like my hand, my hand was on my head going, oh, my God, you got to be kidding yeah. me. And for some people who have been around the block, such as yourself, and who have invested in things, and especially in the industry I work in, you look at people and it's like, you're not losing a couple thousand dollars. You're losing several thousand dollars. And no just, doubt. 
Yeah, it's just amazing, Tom. I just can't believe it. What? Oh, what, you know, I saw this coming almost last year, and you know, I didn't think to what extent how what extent it, it would get this bad, and it definitely surprised me. It was just horrible. Very. Yeah, well, it's surprising long. even a lot of professionals, and, and I'm amazed that they're surprised. But that's a whole other question. Mo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hey, man. Um, it's all about the leadership in our Congress and the politicians. The Republican retards like Richard Nixon making the dollar be worth nothing. Then impeaching Clinton, in which we had a good economy just because he got fellatio. And now you don't impeach somebody that starts wars that we can afford, starts war with Afghanistan, Iraq. Now we want to start a war with Russia. We can't even afford to have a war. Well, I don't think we directly have uh, suggested starting war with Russia. I think what was suggested is that Georgia uh, be added to NATO, and Georgia is now an enemy of Russia. So it would put you in a position, if Georgia needed to be defended by NATO, of the United States fighting against Russia. That's a long way to get there. Nobody's declaring war on Russia. Okay. But uh, also the lies and um, the lies going up there and the mistreatment of the people, like the guy was saying, they don't give the people a break. They give the big institutions. Uh, I understand. Yeah, give it big institutions a break. They're making the you know they're making the money for the country. They're helping out, but so are the people, the working class. We're we're making businesses run. We make we make everything go round too. We're, they just neglect us and treat us like we're nothing. And yeah. I'm looking at the market right now, and uh, gold uh, went up five point ninety. I mean, gold is still worth something, you know. Let me ask you a question. Are you happy that this bailout didn't pass? Are you? I, I think a lot of people are happy. Let me tell you this. I am happy because it's teaching people to be careful who they select as president and as leaders of this country and to think about what they're doing. And I'm also unhappy because we're all going to pay for it, all of us. I just got a, a loan for uh, with Citibank, and I'm making my payments on time. I'm doing really good. My credit score is going up. And guess what? I'm going to pay. Good for you. But I'm going to pay the price because everybody's like, you know, like the economy is bad. I'm going to pay the price for that. Yes. Well, you know what? Everybody who is responsible is going to pay the price. Uh, but by the same token, uh, I agree with you. I think it's important for the banks the mortgage companies, the other financial companies, to learn that there's two sides to having a free market. If you want the freedom to do whatever you want, you know, charge people uh, for being one minute late on their credit cards and things like that, if you want the freedom to do that, when you go under, then you should have the freedom to go broke and go out of business, too. Yep. Yep. To have, right, if you Tom. want the free, if you want the freedom to go into bad neighborhoods where undereducated people are signing deals to to get uh, uh, mortgages that reset in five years and get you thrown out of your house, all right. But when you go out of business, nobody should be bailing you out. That's true. Hey, that's absolutely true. And I think that's uh, really the way most people are seeing it. Thank you for the call, Mo. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Jesse. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jesse. Hey, Father. How you doing? Doing great. You're at ground zero, too, for the money start. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Well, man, I just want to thank you just for all the service you do because I started my FU fund five years ago, and all my coworkers and my people, my neighbors are sweating, and I'm just coasting. And you could just... It's like, oh, it's amazing. Thank you so that's, much. That's what I told you and the other boys out there. Uh, set up your FU fund, and instead of spending money on more and more cars, uh, buying them more and more often, more and more expensive, instead of buying a house you can't afford, just put that cashola away. Yeah, and I'm just going to stay the course. And Anybody who followed my advice is in your position, Jesse. They're all doing great. Yeah, I mean, like, it's unbelievable. Like, you're like an angel, Tom. Thank you very much. Jesse, thank you for the call. I'm glad you're doing well there. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Half past the hour on the Tom Likas Show. And what are we talking about? You know what we're talking about. Holy cow, the market went down over 775 points, 778 to be exact. Biggest single day point loss 
in the history of the stock market. What does that mean to you? That's what we're talking about here at 1-800-5800-TOM. And Republicans, I don't like talk politics on this show, but come on. Republicans went against the president. The president said, bail out the banks. Republicans today voted no. What do you think about that? John on the Tom Likas show. Hello, John. Hey, Father. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to talk to you. It's uh, my pleasure. Uh, never been on. This is a long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank uh, you. You know, I'm calling because I, I really do agree with you. I think, you know, certain actions need to be taken. Um, I don't agree that it should be taxpayer money about the banks, but something obviously needs to be done. Uh, just like you, I am. Yeah, but what? You know, I'm not a financial expert. You know, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm, you know, I am a capitalist at heart. I do invest a lot of my money and responsibly i do pay all my bills on time i have almost zero debt you know i keep a little bit on the credit cards just so i can i guess make the payments and show them i'm using it but you know i've taken a hit these last few months with all that's happened in the stock market all the volatility uh it's just uh amazing and you know it, it's like i said it's very difficult to say what needs to be done if i had to answer you know i'd, I'd be a millionaire like you i suppose well, I I happen to be on the side of people who believe we should not be doing this bailout. Uh, the reason we need to do a bailout is because all of these companies acted irresponsibly, knowing we would bail them out. We need to send banks, mortgage companies, and other big corporations a message. And that is, if you want a free market where things are going up, you're going to have to accept the free market when you crash and burn. That's it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, definitely it shouldn't be a uh, taxpayer money. I definitely think something needs to be done. I mean, uh, how outrageous is it that the Sean Hannity's of the world were always on the air talking about Ronald Reagan and talking about uh, republicanism and talking about getting the government off your back? Now they're begging the government to get on the back of 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 every taxpayer and take money to bail out banks. I mean, I, outrageous. I agree. I mean, you know, Lehman Brothers, you know, Fannie, Freddie, Wamu. I mean, you know, the, you know, those companies deserved it. You know, that bad underwriting. You know, very lax regulations. That's what you get. I mean, people had mortgages they couldn't afford. You know, one more. Well, this is yeah. what happens when you give the the Republicans and the conservatives and the libertarians what they want. This is what happens. You know, uh, they they do what they want. They take all kinds of outrageous and, 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 and incredible risks. And then when they fail, they come to you with hat in hand. Oh, bail us out. Please bail us out. It, you know what? We may all have to live with pain, but it's about time we say no. No bailouts. No. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, they're moving a little too fast uh, for most people's liking. You know, we saw what happened at Iraq. moving fast. I don't think we should use one dollar to bail these companies out. We should let them all fail. Yes, there'll be a recession. Yes, there'll be some short-term pain for people. There will be higher unemployment and what have you. But in the long run, people are not going to be reaching into your pocket to bail out private companies. The same private companies that screw you on fees at the bank, fees to talk to a teller, fees for bounced checks, uh, pay you under 1% interest on your savings. These people need a good, stern lesson, one that's going to hurt really badly. And the more I think about this, I, I'm totally opposed to this bailout. Screw them. I'm going to agree with you more, Father. No, I'm going to agree more. I appreciate it. You have a good one. Take me out old school. I'll take that old school, baby. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Likey Show. From New York City, it's Tom Likey. On the worst day in the stock market ever. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 778 points. Now keep in mind, when I say the worst ever, that's in terms of the number of points the Dow Jones Average dropped. Okay, because that's 7%, but the Dow Jones Average is still at 10,365. 
This would not even make it one of the top ten worst days in terms of percentages. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, if the Dow Jones average was 1,000 and it dropped 777 points, that would be a 77% drop. But if it's 10,000, it's only a 7% drop. And there have been uh, many worse days in terms of percentage drops, including that day in 1929 that the stock market crashed. It was way worse than this. But still, this is the worst that uh, probably we've seen in our lifetime. Horrible. What's this going to mean to us? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say, oh boy, the phones are just smoking here. Jay. Jay, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, what's up, man? Not much. Hey, so there's two things that uh, people aren't really talking about, and uh, I think they're very big issues. The first is uh, the Federal Reserve, big problem behind this whole thing. And the second is uh, the, the the Amero that's coming. They're, they're trying to get a new. Uh, they they need to crash the dollar in order to be to get this North American currency going, which is going to be called the Amero, just like the euro. And, uh, you know what? I would not get into those conspiracy theories uh, because I I do not believe there is a conspiracy theory. This is the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Uh, believe me, I don't think they're that smart. Right. To crash the, the dollar the to Federal start. Reserve. The Federal Reserve pumps money in daily, and that makes the value of the dollar go down. Um, and those guys hijacked the country back in 1913. We were we were based on gold, you know. And now it's just paper. You know, they tricked us into you know using paper as our money. And when really, well, they, what know, do you mean they tricked us into it? Uh, that was a decision that was made, uh, I believe, during the Nixon administration. No, the Federal Reserve is 1913. No, no, but uh, we were on the gold standard until 1975. Right, right, but the, 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 the Federal Reserve is a private company. It's not even government owned. We don't own none of that. It's a private bank owned by stockholders. You know, so yeah, but then, this well, is uh, trust me when I tell you this. This is a conspiracy theory that is talked about on the extreme right wing crazy talk shows on AM radio. And I'm sure you've tuned into them, and that's where you've heard this, correct? That is a, that is a total fact that the Federal Reserve is a private is, bank. Answer my question. Did you get this theory from listening to an extreme right-wing radio talk show on AM? No, because I'm not right, right-wing. Right, I believe Where right, right, did you get it? This is common knowledge, dude. Oh, well, if it's common knowledge, why, do you, why did you call in and tell it to me? The Federal Reserve is not a government agency. That's not what I'm talking about. Look, this is this is like uh, pulling teeth. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Herman on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. What's going on, man? Not much. Hey, Tom. I had a question. Let's say this bill does go through. Well, I heard somewhere around that it's about three thousand dollars per person, right? Isn't that like we kind of invest three thousand dollars in a bank? Well, they love to carry, anytime the government wants to spend your money, they love to call it an investment. Uh, they all do that. Uh, Bill Clinton did that. They all do that. They know that nobody likes tax, the word tax or taxes. So they always try to call it something else, like an investment in your future or just plain investment. Okay, well, but can't, they're, just, can't, they're, they're just, they're just playing with your hand, man. Don't you get it? We can't, they, they can't give us like some kind of certificate. All right, you invested $3,000 in a certain time. If you want, you could cash it in. You could earn interest off of that. I wish they would, but they won't because the money's not going to us. The money is going to these banks. Uh, now, now, what if the bank gives us some kind of uh, certificate, like, let's say like, like a CD or something? $3, oh, CD. I, guess what? I'd be in favor, but that's not what they want to do. Oh, here to Herman. All right, listen to yourself on the radio there. Jenny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jenny. Um, the reason I'm calling is to uh, say that I totally agree with um, not bailing out any of these banks that are requesting, um, you know, to be bailed out. I don't see why we should. Um, I feel that they have done nothing for us. Um, so why should we step up and, you know, and try and, and, and help them now? I agree with you. I think we should let them all burn. I agree with you, Tom. I, you know, I think they lay their bed and I think, 
you know, they made their bed, now they need to lay on it. And I, they, I want to take a page out of Sean Hannity's book. I believe the government should not get involved. I totally agree. I just want to say that I agree with you, Tom, and I love you. Thank you, Jenny. Bye-bye. Appreciate, appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, uh, Tom. First time caller, long time listener. I work Thank in the financial services industry, and I think uh, one thing I can say is that it's a bit in- disingenuous on your part to keep referring to this as a bailout. If, I'm not the only indeed... one who does. Are you kidding? Turn on CNBC. Turn on uh, C-SPAN and listen to politicians. They're all calling it a bailout. And 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 since when? Since when are you the the, the guy that that does something just because everybody else does it? That's not my point, telling me I'm being disingenuous. Why, the fact is, everyone's calling this a bailout, and it is a bailout. Or, or, well, if it's not a bailout, then why should we bother? If it's not a bailout, then you don't need us to do it, right? Then you don't need us to do this, do you? If you don't need to be bailed out, then fine. We'll keep our money, and you guys fix your own problem. How about that? Do you, do you know what Jill Paulson's primary purpose for establishing this fund is? Yes, it's to bail out all these banks and financial companies that took wild risks without regulation for years and years, and now it's all coming home to roost, and they want us to save them. And I don't think we should. Well, it's to it's to impart liquidity to the system. And the, the, the problem in the financial markets right now, as you can see by looking at the Dow's performance today, is that for, for all intents and purposes, as you would say, uh, the banks have stopped lending to each other, and they stopped lending to other corporations. Because they and don't trust them, because the banks know how dishonest the other banks are. Well, the, 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 the banks are... The, the, the I clients... didn't hear Wachovia. I didn't hear Wachovia going on TV with commercials and saying, by the way, we're almost insolvent. I didn't hear WAMU on TV. Instead of their Dobie ad campaign saying, woohoo, why didn't they go on TV and say, woohoo, we're going broke? Well, they were the dishonest, and the reason banks won't lend to each other is because they each one knows how dishonest the other ones are. And and have they and, and they have been severely punished. Look at AIG stock price. And I wouldn't call I wouldn't call. Well, the line wait a minute. Well, we own we own we own AIG yeah. now. The the government bought AIG. We own it. Well, I didn't hear it. AIG. Yet, by the way, by the way, I just came back. I I went to well, I I, I last week I was at Yankee Stadium for, to see the last game played there, and then I came back here to New York to see the last game played at Shea Stadium. Big AIG ads all over the place with a slogan that says "The strength to be there." I didn't see AIG telling us that they were in trouble. They were buying advertising like it was going out of style. They bought that advertising a year ago, and you, or six months ago, and you know that. It was on CNBC every day, right up to the day that they declared that they were in trouble. And they paid for it a long time ago. They always advertise on oh. CNBC. Do you know what the terms are for the government Again. line of credit that's been extended I, to AIG? The reason they will not lend money to each other is because they all know what dishonest bastards they all are. That's what they know, and that's why they won't lend to each other. Well, and the, if this, the, the, if this the, the bailout is such a good is, deal. Is AIG is paying through the nose. For the line of credit that the Fed has extended to it, AIG, As they if it doesn't should. borrow, AIG, if it doesn't borrow one penny on that line of credit, will pay a commitment fee of more than six billion dollars. That's billion. Good. That's and boy. That's great. So, so, so the, the Fed is out there extracting its pound of flesh in each one of these deals, but people persist. People perpetuate the thought that banks are getting bailed out. Banks are not getting bailed out. If bankers are losing banks, everything. What then the they don't need our do? help. Then they don't need our help, do they? They they need our help. They, they need our help. And, and it's a bailout. Today. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If they need our help, that's a bailout. They they, they need our help to 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 ensure. That the financial. That the Why don't they do what the average person does? Why don't they go apply for a loan somewhere and get turned down like the average listener? They. they the plan is in part designed to ensure that world markets retain their faith in U.S. security markets. If there is no faith why should why the should the world markets have faith in them? We don't have faith in them, and why should we? Well, we should do everything in our power to ensure that the world views U.S. financial markets. Yes, as and a good way to a good way to do that would be to make sure that all these companies that abuse the public trust go out of business, and that we prosecute every everybody who broke the law to the fullest extent of the law. That'll be a good way to restore trust, not by bailing them out. 
I'm, I'm all for the prosecute to the false extent of the law. I'm all for cutting the CEO pay and the golden parachutes. But I, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, we think it should, as much as possible, should be done to retain the integrity of the U.S. financial system. It's not, it's not our down. fault. It's not the American people's fault that the integrity of the system has been screwed. The fault is in the companies that took advantage of no regulation from the top, did whatever they wanted, and now they're in trouble, and now they've screwed up the whole system. And now you want to go ahead and let yourself and let them, let them shoot you and shoot shoot the markets in the foot, uh, just so you can have some satisfaction. I would say the average you know, American doesn't have nearly as much to lose as the CEOs and the executives of these companies. And I think the average American, the reason this didn't pass today is because Americans are flooding their congressmen and their senators with calls saying, "Say no to this." Yeah, say but they don't no. understand what it is. Well, again, uh, you know, certainly they understand the consequences of the bad acts of all those people. But, but again, they don't know what the plan is. You don't know what the plan uh, is, I venture to say. You know, say. It's, a, it's amazing to me. Well, nobody knows what the plan is. That's the whole point. They want to get $700 billion blank check from the government without telling us the full extent of how it's going to be utilized. You don't even know what the plan is. The, 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 the plan is... To, to buy illiquid you don't mortgages know. from financial institutions and you lack don't of know. to lend. The fact is, if you read any story about this bailout, if you read any story about it, it tells you that the details are not all cooked up yet. They don't even know what all the details are. Nobody knows what the plan is. They, they have a, a, an idea of what they want you to think it is. But nobody knows what the plan is. Don't be ridiculous. The Tom Likas Show.